All right, guys. So I have not actually recorded a podcast here for a bit. So it's been it's been kind of a minute. But today we are talking about dating. Yes, dating. So this is this is for the this is especially geared towards the guys. But I think you girls out there might find some valuable pieces here. And you guys are gonna know my deep dark secrets on, on my <laughs> my dating strategy. So we're gonna jump in. Um, Honestly, I would say that for me, dating's kind of been a bit of a mystery for most of my life. And it's funny because it's like people that know me, I, I'm super deliberate. If there's something like I don't know how to do, I just become obsessed with it often, right? So I was insecure about my voice. So what I do is I, I got a vocal coach. I started taking voice lessons. I didn't understand anything about cars or mechanics in any way, shape or form. So what I do, I just started YouTubing things and looking it up. I mean. What I, I just, I'm a big believer that there's information out there everywhere. It's easy to find. You just have to look in the right places and you can really learn anything and anything's a skill. And on the list eventually, and this is one that sounds even kind of crazy, is like even like how, comedians. There is a whole art behind comedians and how they do what they do. And a lot of what kind of led me to this, this path is just understanding that concept that every skill is acquirable. Every person can acquire skills and can, we're not, we're not, solid creatures we're very plastic you know we're, we're very adaptable so for me dating and understanding women i think was generally just like confusing i think most guys would agree with that like because i think that most women themselves are kind of like yeah i don't really understand exactly why i feel the way i feel and why i'm, I'm feeling I'm, I'm i'm into you this time and then for some reason i'm just not feeling all of a sudden like they don't really get that either and so it's kind of difficult to understand that psychology so i kind of really took a deep dive into psychology um initially i was studying marriage and divorce and um, male and female psychology, sexual psychology, and just all these different things. I got really into that for a while. And then I really started shifting over to dating because it was something that was a need in my life. I kind of felt like, man, I feel so insecure. Like, I don't feel like I'm secure knowing how to, how to connect with a girl and how to actually have like a meaningful relationship. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I think most guys that you can always find people that have low standards for themselves and, and get, you know, get, get that make out in or something if that's what you're into. But for me, I wanted that deep connection. I wanted to actually be able to track someone that I really wanted. I think very often we all, we also settle for like, ah, I guess that why not, you know, might as well. I don't have any better options right now. And I, for me, I'm like, I just, I was like, no, I want to be deliberate. I want to be deliberate everything in my life. I want to actually chase down who I want to chase down and try to create a connection and not just settle for whatever's the most convenient option. And, um, so this is, this is some things that I've learned. Again, I am not an expert. I'm just figuring this out, but this is, I, I feel like I've got some valuable pieces. I talked to a lot of guys actually that, um, when I talk to them, usually they're kind of, they're kind of a little bit blown away. They're like, wow, like I didn't really think of it that way. And so that's why I feel confident sharing this is not because of course that I've got it all figured out and I'm, I'm this, this slayer out there in the field. I mean, I just, I'm just a guy who wants to have a deep, meaningful connection with a girl and wants to be able to not get in my own way. To, to let things happen. So um, here's, some, here's some elements. So number one, I think the most important and fundamental piece is understanding what it requires to attract a woman. I think that as you start to look into it, it's not a quick fix. I think you can, you can read books on like hookup, you can read books on how to like say this like certain phrase and do this certain thing and get a girl to sleep with you or whatever. I think that's a complete waste of your time. Um, number one, I think it's highly unfulfilling. Two, I don't think it, it's going to produce the long-term high-quality relationship that you want. So um, the fundamentals that I'm going to talk about here that I believe are really important are, are not easy. <laughs> they're, not, they're not like, hey, go try this and within, within two days you're going to have the girl your dreams or, or even the belief that you can have any girl you want. I don't believe in that. I really don't. I don't believe that any girl is available to you. I don't believe that you might say, well, there's just one girl that I'm really like just fixated on. I'm like, the biggest part of it too is understanding that there's a lot of fish in the sea. And I know that sounds horrible and I mean that with all the respect in the world, but truly like we, we are not, we are not like destined to be with just one person. There's not just only one person. Oh, if we don't have, I don't have this one person in my life, I can never be happy. I can never be like truly in love unless I'm with so-and-so. That's just not true because again, we're plastic creatures. So number one, remember that you are not, there's not just one girl out there. And for girls, there's not just one guy out there and getting caught up on somebody Um, well, I think my camera just died. Bummer. Um, I guess there will not be a YouTube video with this podcast. I was actually going to do it this time, but the GoPro looks like it is tuckered out. So anyways, 
Um, I think the biggest problem that I've, and I've, <laughs> I just talked to a lot of people, and I don't, again, I don't even solicit it. People literally come and ask me, they're like, hey, so I can't figure out this guy, or I can't figure out this girl, and my friends ask me all the time, and I'm like, the biggest thing is, don't get caught up on somebody. Don't think that there's only one person out there that you can ever be happy with, otherwise you are truly setting yourself up for failure. Um, another big rule is non-neediness. If you really, really want to be able to attract someone who's worthwhile, you can't be needy. Now, why do I say that? Because needy people, it's, an, it's a subconscious red flag for all of us. If any of you have ever dated anyone and they just seemed way too into you without any good reason, it freaks you out. Everyone, if you haven't been there, just wait, it will happen. If, if I take a girl out and she will not stop texting me and just talks about how she thinks she's fallen in love with me on the first date and how she thinks we're meant to be or whatever like that, I'm fr I freak out and she could be the best girl on the planet. But if she comes on too strong, my biology and my, and my psychology say like, get out of this because there's something wrong. Now, why is that? Because our experience has taught us that everything has a cost. And if someone jumps into something too quickly, our experience has been, there's something wrong. They're hiding something. There's something you're not seeing here. Um, if she was that great a catch, why don't other guys go for her? That's the kind of psychology I think that guys deal with. So if you really want to be able to, I think, attract the girl that you want, you have to focus on that non-eatiness. Now, non-eatiness is something that you can't like, it's not a magic wand. It's kind of a, an inside out approach. If you really want to attract the girl you want, more or less, you have to kind of surrender the idea of attracting the girl you want. Um, super paradoxical, and I'm going to explain this. So the biggest thing I think about attraction, and it led me full circle. It's the funniest thing because I think what we want, we just want, just tell me how to get the girl. And I'm like, hey, sorry, that's just not how it works. If you want to get the girl you want to get, you have to become the kind of person that will attract that type of girl. And I'll say that again. If you want to get the kind of girl you want, you have to become the kind of guy who attracts that type of girl. So, and a big part of that is recognizing you do not need a woman or anyone to be happy. Now, does that sound kind of messed up? Maybe, but here's my thing is that you shouldn't ever rely on anyone to dictate your happiness. Or, oh, I'm not dictating, she's not dictating my happiness. I just really love her. I'm like, no, no, listen, like if you literally are depressed, if she doesn't text you within three hours and your heart goes through the roof, if she, if you hear your phone ding and you're like, oh, maybe it's her, maybe it's her, and you're like checking your phone, oh. You know, if you're going through that kind of thing, you're needy. Trust me, you are needy. Until you learn to surrender and say, you know what? I have to go there and admit, and, and, and go to the place emotionally where I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna accept that she might totally blow me off and I have to be okay with that and still find peace inside myself, happiness inside myself. For some people, this is crazy. They're like, why would that? Of course you'd be happy anyways. No, but I think this is so common for so many people that we think someone's gonna fix our problems. We really do. We kind of believe if I just date so-and-so, all my problems will be over. If I just date so-and-so, like everything will be right. The bottom line is if you're not happy without the girl, you long-term can't be happy with the girl. And I firmly believe in that. Because here's what's gonna happen. If you're already needy, you will most likely attract a needy woman. And you'll both be needy together and you'll create this codependency and you'll think you're in love and, and you will be. And I'm, not, I'm not here bashing on how someone feels like they fall in love, but the honest truth of it, is you're a drug for each other. That's my opinion. You become a drug for each other. And if that person were to ever leave you or walk out of your life or, or die suddenly or anything like that, your whole world would collapse and you would never recover, ever recover. And you'd always walk around depressed and blue. That is not healthy. And you might think, oh, that's true love. And I hear that, it, it drives me crazy. That is not true love. That is absolutely not true love. Again, and thinking that there's one person out there that can fix all your problems, that can just heal your heart, your other half, that is not true love. True love is hard freaking work. Um, I'm not talking like an expert. I just happen to know that because I've got parents that are happily married and I feel so blessed for that. But I'll tell you right now, the one thing I learned about my parents about marriage is that it is the hardest thing you will ever do in your life, but it's worth it. My parents, I think, were people who Honestly, the reason they got married is not because the stars aligned and they were like love at first sight and he saw her from a distance and it's like, oh my goodness, she's the one. That never happened. But instead, they both recognized that it was a good decision. They both recognized that they could be happy together and they made it work. I don't think either one of them thought this was the perfect scenario. It was, it was meant to be. I don't, think, I don't think they even thought that. I don't even know if they really were truly 
and that's kind of a hard phrase to use, but truly in love even. They just knew it was going to be a good decision and that they could create love. Again, love is a verb, not an, before, be, before the noun. You know, you have to have the verb love of creating that inside your relationship rather than expecting it to happen. Okay, so that's, that goes back to non-neediness. And that's my, that's my second point. You have to get to a point where you do not need that person to be happy. This is an inside out approach. This is not something you can snap your fingers and all of a sudden be done. This is something that is affecting every relationship in your life. You think that a job is gonna make you happy? Oh, if I just get promoted, oh man, if I just have promoted, all my problems would somehow magically go away. That is not true. Oh man, if I just, if just so-and-so would do this, I, I could just finally be happy. It's this belief that we're waiting on external forces to be happy. When you can reach a point inside yourself that you can say to yourself, you know what, I'm happy regardless. It's the being proactive. It's Viktor Frankl's self-awareness where you can say, you know what, I'm going to be happy because I choose to be happy. Life doesn't happen to me. I happen to life. I carry my own weather with me. I'm not affected by the weather out there. Okay, so that's that's the second thing. And that's a whole different thing. And if you guys want to know, send me a message and I can I'll really go into depth of this. If you do, if you feel like I don't know exactly what you're talking about, hit me up with a message and I'll go through it a little deeper. Because this is a profound concept. This is not just about love and relationships. This is about everything. Non-neediness or neediness will kill your relationships, it will kill your work, it'll kill so many things in your life. Um, okay, here's the next thing. Point number three, vulnerability. A great way to attract someone that you really wanna attract is through deep and intense vulnerability. If you can reach a point where you're truly super vulnerable and you can say, hey, listen, this is, this is me. The biggest problem is, is that these guys, I think, and I, I was here, I'm not gonna deny that for a second, I was here at this point where I would go into a relationship and think, I just have to kind of be who she wants me to be so that she'll fall in love with me. I'm on a date and I know our political views are way different. I'm a little more conservative leaning. And I'm like, gosh, she might seem, she's a little more liberal leaning. I'm gonna kind of play my liberal card right now. So that way she doesn't like, <laughs> so she doesn't think that I'm this, you know what I'm talking about? We do it all the time. We kind of just will downplay parts of our personality even in order to win this girl over. That is a horrible idea because again, it's neediness. It's an inability to say, hey, if it doesn't work with her, that's okay. I don't need anyone, needs the word. I'm not saying don't want anyone. I don't need anyone to be happy. I can be happy just inside my own soul. Now, and if you can get reach that point, you're gonna start getting, you're gonna become more vulnerable. vulnerable. And I mean vulnerability in both senses. It's an ability to admit that you're hurting. It's a vulnerability to admit that you've suffered, you've gone through pain. You're not trying to mask and say, oh yeah, my life is perfect. I've never suffered. Um, in fact, vulnerability, they said that mutual vulnerability is that um, a lot of people believe is the number one reason other people, that people fall in love with each other. When you express vulnerability with each other and the other person accepts you for that, that creates a deep sense of love. Now, vulnerability also comes to the fact where you can say, everyone in the room has a strong opinion about, about a certain topic and you go, and they're like, well, what do you think? What do you think, Brunson? I'm like, you know, I don't agree at all. And everyone goes, whoa, like, whoa, dude. And it's, it's super controversial, but that's part of being vulnerable is saying, I don't need your opinion, any of your opinion to feel good about myself. I don't need your approval to feel good about myself. And there is nothing more attractive to, the, to a female, I think, than, ability, than, than a man who stands up for what he believes regardless. Even people, and I've seen this, and I'm not making this up. I know people that our political views were so different, but I was so vulnerable and open and maybe even a little bit cavalier about my, my political beliefs and I could tell they found it extremely attractive. I didn't want to date them because again, for me, it has to make sense. <laughs> like it has to make sense on paper before I would want to date somebody. But that was interesting. And I've seen that happen over and over again. I've seen guys who like, and you ask, why do these good girls go with these dirt bag guys? A lot of times it's because, well, it seems like a sim it seems some similar vulnerability. Actually, they're just narcissists, but they're so bold and so outspoken and they just walk like they own the world and they're not afraid to defend anybody. They just say, oh yeah, this is what I think, this is my thing, and, but it's attractive. It's attractive to be able to state exactly what you believe and stand behind that. Um, point number four for me would be honesty and openness. Um, an ability to express, again, what you believe and also to be humble and to be timid and to be sensitive and all those things. You don't, and again, if you're pretending this, and I know guys do this, they'll sit there and uh, get kind of moist eyes when they're watching Little Mermaid because you know you want the girl to think that you've got a sensitive side. That's just bull crap, and I think you know that. That does not produce anything good. But an ability to cry 
when it is something that you are sensitive about or emotional about, like that's okay. And being able to do that with your shoulders back rather than slumping them forward, that also tells a girl, this is someone I want to date. So that's been my experience. All right, now let's talk about a few other things. Um, I hope that it goes without being said. If you're dating, date for a reason. Dating for hookups is not going to bring you any kind of happiness. That's my opinion. Do with it what you will. But I really do believe that there is a strong... Um, it, it, will, it will taint the way you look at love and, and, and relationships if you get into the hookup game. And trust me, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty convinced of this one. Um, now, I just want to get into some nitty-gritty here for a second. Here are some rules, I think... Okay, so that was the first part, right? How do you attract a girl? How do you become the kind of person who attracts a girl? Now we can, and if you want to know the other, the other pieces to it, keep listening to my podcast. I'm not an expert, but I will tell you right now, if you become something, that is attractive. A man on a mission is attractive. A man with passion and purpose and drive and who's going somewhere. You ask any girl and they will tell you, yeah, it's really attractive when a guy is focused and passionate about what he believes in. It's extremely attractive. Now, this is where I'm going to get a little bit offensive. So all you guys can, you know, just hang on here for a second and work with me. But I don't believe in the whole political correctness thing. I kind of believe I just, I want to say what I want to say. So understand, I mean this with a lot of love, but here's the bare bone fact of it. I think women like masculine men. And maybe you disagree with that, but frankly, I don't really care. If you, you know what I mean? I believe that Women want a man. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about a narcissist. I'm not talking about a guy who's so insecure. He has to wear this big macho front. That's not, that's not manliness to me. Manliness is you have your shoulders back. You carry yourself with purpose and passion. We, I think, I think there's, there's so much culture pushing men today to be just kind of to be submissive and to be, um, to not ever take charge, to not, to kind of suppress their masculinity because it's kind of not popular right now. I firmly disagree with that. Very firmly disagree with that. Be who you are. Be the man that you know you're supposed to be. I hold the door open for girls even if they don't like it. And I know that's so offensive. But I do that. And that's something I believe in because that's part of my masculine code. I believe that it's masculine to be assertive and to take charge. I'm not talking about being disrespectful. And whenever I say this, people are like, oh, so you think that you think that women are incapable? And I'm like, no, why do you, why do people keep thinking this? No, absolutely not. But for me, how I express my masculinity is with respect and assertiveness. So again, and I believe that very firmly. And, and you might think, well, that's just, that's just your traditional programming. Maybe. I think it's biological programming. I'm sorry, to, I'm sorry to say this, but if you just have to look at the basic biology behind it. That's the way it's been for thousands of years. That when a man is assertive, biologically women are programmed to recognize that as a strong mate who can protect them. Because that's the way it was for thousands and thousands of years. If you had a guy who was like, I don't know, and kind of wishy-washy and just kind of got pushed wherever the wind blew him, he just, he wasn't going to be, he wasn't able to protect you. So women are biologically hardwired to respond to an assertive male. Now, it is our duty as men to be respectful and to never abuse that. And I think a lot of guys do. And that's why going back, why do women end up with these crappy guys? Because a lot of them are assertive. And biologically, they're programmed to respond to that. Now, if you don't have the morality with it, it's a terrible disaster. But I do think that a moral man who is very assertive and very strong, that is attractive. Um, going for a little further, uh, going a little further forward here. Now that you know a little bit of the basics of how I think you have to attract a woman, I want to go into what actually makes a good date because I feel like this is a lost art. I really do. I think this is something that like nobody actually talks about much anymore is dating because we all want to hang out. And I know that's like, I feel like this old person saying this right now because I remember when people tell me that they're like, now guys, let's not, don't be the people that hang out. Go and ask women on dates. But I'm serious. It's a real thing. It's a really toxic thing that we have. We're not being deliberate. We're not saying this is what I want. I want her. I want to date you. And so we're like, hey, you want to hang out and uh, we'll go with a group of friends because we don't have the freaking cojones to like go and ask a woman out and tell her, hey, I, I'm interested. Again, going back to non-neediness, vulnerability, honesty, and openness. Being able to say, I want to date you 
And she goes, whoa, 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 whoa. And then everyone kind of looks around like, what on earth? I can't believe you just said that. But that's, that's openness and vulnerability. But again, if your shoulders are slumped when you say it, it's not going to go well for you. But if your shoulders are straight back and you've got a, you know, your back is straight and you've got confidence when you say that and you're like, you know what? I want to date you. I think it'll go well for you if it's the kind of girl you want to date. Um, insecure women generally do not respond well to that. That's been my experience. Secure women who are secure in their femininity, love it, love it. So everyone's got their own thing, but I like to date a very feminine woman because I believe in masculinity and femininity. I, I love it. <laughs> so um, dating, here's some things that I believe are kind of the ground rules for dating. All right, so here's some, here's some of my rules when I actually get down to dating. We've dealt with attraction, and we're gonna talk about the actual dating rules. Here are some of my rules. Number one, I always try to go out with multiple girls at once. Let me qualify that. What I do is I will go dancing, I'll see a cute girl somewhere, ask her out, ask for her number. Regardless of how I do it, I try to find three girls. I'm like, maybe these are three girls I could see myself possibly dating. And then I just rotate. If I'm, if I'm available every Saturday, then every Saturday I just go. And I don't, I don't ever ask the same girl out twice in a row. I keep rotating through them. Even if I don't feel like it, I keep rotating through them. And I do that until I feel like I know one of them well enough to make some kind of a commitment. Whether that's I kiss, whether I, whether I kiss her and say, and they, we both know that it really means something and that we're, we're kind of moving that direction. Until I make some kind of a commitment to her, I will for sure keep dating at least three girls at a time that's a big, that's a, that's a super solid thing for me because I found what happens is that if you don't, you get too fixated on one girl and, I, and you cut off a lot of possibilities. Again, we, the likelihood of you getting it right the first time is pretty slim. The best thing to do is to date lots of girls, get lots of good experience, get in a mode where you're comfortable around the opposite sex so that you don't screw it up when you do meet the girl that you want to spend your life with. So, I'm a big believer in, in dating multiple girls at a time and, and just not settling for one of them until you really feel like, okay, you know, I'm really seeing that I, I can really see myself dating her and I, I want to date her. So what you do is then I, and then for me, I would, I'd make a move on her, try to kiss her or whatever else. <laughs> and if it went well and we both were feeling like, yeah, that was great. I like where this is going. I tell the other girls, Hey, it's been great. Um, I'm actually kind of dating someone right now, or I just don't, and sometimes I don't say anything depending how far we on, far along we are in that relationship. Um, and then I commit to that one person. Um, dating at least three girls at once for me is a great way to not be super intense. I'm an intense guy and a lot of guys I know are also the same way. We kind of see what we want and we have a serious hunter complex where we're like, that's what I want. And we just, it's the testosterone flowing. You just go for it and you kind of get fixated on, on one particular girl. So I found that to be a very helpful, um, a very helpful thing. Rule number two for me is X minus one. And that is if X is where she is feeling satisfied with the date, like, oh, this has been a really great date. You want to end the date. Or I should say X minus one is where if X is where she's kind of like, ah, I'm kind of like feeling ready to go home. You need to end before that. Always take her home before she wants to go home. Um, and I feel like I need to say this one more time. Always take her home before she wants to go home. I have seen a lot of guys really screw this one up <laughs> because here's what happens is they're like, ah, the date's not going well. We're not clicking. Maybe if we go watch a movie now instead, that's going to change. Okay. That didn't work. Let's go play games now. Okay. We're going to go to a bonfire now. And, and they, they turn what should be a 30 minute date or an hour date into this all day thing. And the girl's just like, please take me home. And, and she doesn't know how to say that, but she's miserable. Um, I've seen that happen a lot. And I think you can really screw up a lot of potential relationships by, by uh, trying to have these crazy long dates. So my, my opinion on your first, kind of depending on the person, depending how quickly you move along, I'd say at least three to five dates. I want to have it under an hour and a half, two hours if things are just really clicking um, and it's just really moving well. That's tops. Because again, you want an expectation where she's like, you know what? The date's only going to be two hours maximum. It's easy to keep saying yes. And especially if you're chasing someone who you know you're gonna have to kind of persuade that you're, you're the guy of her dreams. Um, and I've had this happen and <laughs> with a lot of people. Um, in fact, actually my current girlfriend, um, this is exactly what happened. It was, it was the funniest thing. She was not interested in me for quite a while. It took a lot of effort 
And what I started doing though, was I started having short dates and literally, I mean, in, I'm not joking. Our, some of our dates were literally less than an hour. Um, I would ask her out. I'm like, Hey, let's get a snow cone. She's like, okay, cool. And we're going to go get a hammock. We're going to set it up in a park and we're going to sit there and just talk and eat snow cones. Um, okay. Now we're going to go run over to this. We're going to run to the lake and we're going to go jump in and, and swim for a minute or two. And then we're going to commit. It was always super short, very simple, very low commitment, especially at first. And the better I, I started to get getting to know her, the more I kind of made it longer dates and longer dates. But, um, for someone who like her was really not that interested in me, it was really important that there was an expectation that date was going to be short. Um, and again, the goal is when she's just going like, oh man, this is the best date ever. That's exactly when you end the date. <laughs> That's exactly when you end it. I learned that as a missionary teaching about Jesus Christ. I, the exact same thing. Whenever people are starting to be like, man, this is, I, I love this message. And for two years of this in Russia, right? But that was something that we learned was you don't wait until the lesson dies out. You wait until it's like you kind of reach that height and you go, okay, thank you for your time. And then you're out. When the second you kind of realize that you've hit that, that peak point of the date and things are just really just going awesome, start to wrap it up. And people might be like, that's crazy. That No, it's not because it's leaving her in the right state of mind. Like, man, that was fun. I enjoyed that. That was a great date. And any girl out there that listens to this that's been on a bad date is going to thank me for saying that to you. Um, number three, always play the long game. I think a major, major problem that we, that we make is that sometimes we're just like, I'm not really interested in anything. I'm just looking for a fling. And then you end up falling in love with the girl. I've had that happen. I've had that happen. I've seen it happen. I've had it happen many times. Um, you're like, ah, oh, it's just someone I'm going to, it's just fun. And so you don't, you don't essentially there. And, and this is, I'm going to, I'm going to take a moment here. I'm going to, I know I'm, I'm the worst tangent person ever. I'm super ADHD. I apologize, but it is a game. And when people say, I hate playing games, I'm like, well, all right. If, if that works for you, great. I'm not, and when I say playing a game, I'm not, I don't believe in manipulation. I don't believe in using quick fix tactics and say this phrase and do this and do that and these little formulas. I don't believe in that. I believe in good, solid principles, but I do believe that it is a game. You cannot tell me that it's not in our human nature that when someone seems super eager, we kind of push away. You could be the best the most amazing potential candidate on the planet. But if you come on too strong to somebody, they're just not going to be interested. So there is a game involved. It's knowing how to be patient. It's knowing how to X minus one, take her home before she wants to go. There is a game. And part of the game, and I believe the long game, is always pretend that every girl you're dating, you might, or every girl you take on a date, you actually might end up dating her. Don't do the fling thing. Don't do the hangout thing. Don't do the... Uh, I'm not going to actually put effort into this because you know what? I don't see it going anywhere. So I'm just going to do a really crappy date. We'll make out at the end of it and we'll call it good. I don't, that is a terrible, it's a terrible way to go, I think. So whenever there's any girl, even if you, even if you think there's eh, maybe not a great chance, treat her well, end the date early, and just leave yourself in a position where you're not going to go say, oh man, I just wish I'd been more like, I wish I'd done better dates and, I, and now I'm, I'm falling in love with her and she's just not interested and I already blew my chance because... I just didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't think it was ever going to go anywhere. Number four is focus on the goal. And this is something a, a friend told me. And I loved it. He said, what is the goal of your first date? And I'm like, uh, to make her like me wrong. It's to get a second date. Okay. What is the goal of your second date? Um, to get a third date is like, exactly. And what's the goal of your third date to get a fourth. And what's the goal of your fourth date to get a fifth. Okay. And that's, that's right. We're not here trying, you, on your first date, your goal is not to make her fall in love with you. And that's why a lot of guys think, I just need a super elaborate date. I'm gonna take her to dinner. I'm gonna go spend $180. That's insane. Speaking of which, I think that you should never spend money on your first date. Um, anyways, but focus on the goal. The goal is just to get a second date. That's it. And then a third date and then a fourth date and so on and so forth. Number five, don't be boring. That's it. That's number five. Don't be boring. Don't do stupid dates. Plan for it. If she's worth your time to go spend a couple hours with, then don't watch a movie. Don't take her to dinner. That's the go-to date. It's garbage. Taking a girl to dinner is the worst first date. Second only to going to the movie theater. It's awful. It's, it's a terrible idea. One, it's way too intense for a first date. That's not what you want to do. You don't be sitting there staring eye to eye with somebody for like a whole hour and a half. 
trying to pretend like you don't actually eat. And they're sitting there like trying to use their best manners and like, okay, hold on, what? It's no elbows on the table. I mean, you don't want that. You don't be sitting there thinking about like how you look because the person's literally staring at you for an hour and a half. That's insane. Um, but going back to point five, don't be boring. If you're gonna plan a date, do it right. Think about it. Get with your buddies. Plan an awesome, super fun, creative date and create a reputation that you do fun dates. And I promise you, even if you don't plan on, you know, even if you're like, I'm not really in the dating mode right now, I'm just trying to like, or I'm not really like planning to fall in love with anyone anytime soon, that's great. So create a reputation where you're the guy that every girl wants to go on a date with, even if they're not interested in you. They're like, oh, his dates are just awesome. Don't kill yourself and think like it's gotta be like some elaborate go to this amusement park kind of thing. No, I'm talking about super short, cheap, fun dates. For me, I love snow cones in a hammock. Awesome date. For me, I love playing a game and you throw like a little twist into it. Like the loser has to like do some kind of a dare challenge, right? Um, like, we'll, like we'd play for push-ups and things like that or play for squats or whatever. I mean, we just do all kinds of stuff that kind of adds a different element. So this is, this, is a, this is a little formula that I have that I think helps make a date good. So here's actually planning the date. Number one, try to have some kind of challenge. Make it fun, make it a little competitive. Um, and this is, I'm talking of course from my perspective because I like to be competitive. And so I wanna date someone who can handle that. But I'll do, I mean, I'll, I'll, throw, I'll throw $5 behind a game and be like, all right, you know, winner takes all type of thing. Or I'll say, hey, I'll bet you five bucks you can't throw that rock and hit that, that tree over there. And all six of them were like throwing rocks. And I, I did that once, so we were out there shooting and I told my buddy, I was like, hey, five bucks says you can't hit that, uh, that shotgun shell out there. And I went and stood up a little, you know, a little three inch shotgun shell and just this little tiny thing, but I put it way out there. We're all shooting with pistols and just like, like firing away and everyone's just going nuts because there's five bucks on the line and who can hit it first, right? Um, that to me is the kind of money I'd rather spend. I wouldn't rather spend money on a date or some crazy whatever. I'd rather go have a super simple date and say, hey, five bucks says you can't do X, Y, Z. Um, creativity is, is my second point for a good date element. Take a really basic idea, but then then change it up. I mean, you might say, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna go um, country dancing," but we we're gonna we're gonna get dressed up first, though. And she's like, "Oh wait, what? Yep, here's what we're doing." And you bring and I bring her, I bring her over to my house, like, "Hey, sir, can I borrow your can I borrow your cowboy hat?" And I slap it on her. Let's get some boots, and we just make it fun, right? You get creativity and a little bit of art to it, and a little bit of fun to it. Um, I mean, heck, you might say, "Look, we're gonna do, we're gonna do an '80s themed date, and we're gonna go get milkshakes, and we're gonna go drive up to this cool place, and we're gonna." I mean, whatever, right? But adding a little creativity and a fun element to it um, totally changes the date. And then connection. Every date, I think, should try to have connection in it. And some people think this, and some people are like really opposed to this, but I'm a big believer in don't, don't be afraid to put your arm around a girl. Don't be afraid to hold her hand if the moment's right. And don't be afraid to go in, a kiss if, go in, go in for the kiss if it's right. Don't do that just for your own personal entertainment because oh, I got nothing else to do and this date's kind of boring, so let's just make out. A horrible way to, to do a date, but go for connection. I'm not saying that you should like get physical on the first date. I'm just saying that go for connection. If you're not gonna connect and like hold her hand, then ask her questions. Try to actually be vulnerable with her. Ask her and say, hey, so tell me like what, what is one memory you have as a childhood that you have from your childhood, you just, that you just have like always remembered. She's like, oh wow, that's kind of interesting. I love asking girls, I'm like, hey, so like, this sounds kind of crazy, but would, from your parenting, like, do you plan on parenting your kids the same way that you were parented? I love that question. I don't always ask them on the first date, but I love that question, because it really like, they're like, oh man, oh, there's so many things I do different, oh, but my parents did this and this so well, and you learn so much about their family, their upbringing, the way they were raised, the way they feel about life, the way they feel about parenting, family, it's awesome. There's some amazing questions out there. Um, you can look up, Oh, was it 36 questions? It was 36, 36 questions for falling in love or something like that. It's a, it's a great resource. Um, it's about, it was this guy's opinion that vulnerability was what causes people to fall in love. And so he created a list of questions that slowly progress up in vulnerability. And, and they, they're great questions. Um, and I don't, I don't use them exactly, but I've loved the ideas in them. A few of them actually, I do, I've, I've copied and pasted a few of his questions because I love asking girls like, a handful of questions that I feel like really helps me to get to know them. In fact, I should do a podcast on that maybe a little later. I'll do a podcast on these questions that I like to ask because I really enjoy it. I want to I get to know somebody. Some people are like, oh, I just want to have someone fun to hang out with. And sometimes it's great. I'm, I've got nothing against that. But for me, usually, I really want to get to know them. I want to know what makes them tick. I want to know how their brain works. I want to know how they feel about life and how they their dreams and their ambitions and things like that. So 
Anyways, this has been kind of long, and I think I've bounced all over the place. I really hope this was, this was, was um, meaningful and worth your time. For me, this has been a really difficult pain point and learning about it, and I'm, I'm still not, again, I'm still figuring out. Right now, I'm learning the boyfriend game and how to be the best kind of boyfriend ever. And then later, I'm going to learn about the husband game, how to be the best husband ever. Then we learn about the father game, how to be the best father ever, then the grandfather. I mean, it's always an eternal cycle, but um, I feel like right now, this is something that I, I feel like I was, I was doing pretty well with. Not the best out there. There's good, better guys out there, but I feel like some of the things I learned, so many guys need to hear, and so many girls need to hear because they need to understand a lot of, I mean, a lot of these things are very applicable to women as well. Again, I'm a big believer in, 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 in masculinity and femininity. I'm just, I, I love that concept. Um, and, and of course, this podcast is more or less kind of geared to my journey. So it does have a bit of a masculine theme to it, but I do not think that these principles apply only to men. Um, and I think that especially the attraction part, vulnerability, non-neediness, honesty, openness, Becoming the best person that you can become is the best way to attract the kind of person you want. Those are just core, critical, fundamental truths. And the last thing I'll tell you about this was um, I'm also a big believer in being highly intentional about what you want. And um, this is kind of a little bit vulnerable, but I created a, <laughs> a declaration of the girl that I wanted to date next. And it was the weirdest thing because I went and looked at it and the girl that I'm currently dating is that person. It was it blew my socks off because I did this for months and I was like, you know what? I am tired of just feeling like I am not being super intentional about who I'm dating. I've dated some amazing girls, amazing girls, yet I feel that I was often not very intentional. I wasn't like, okay, this is, this is exactly what I want. This is the kind of person that I want to date right now. And I did that one day and I said, okay, I'm gonna write it up and I'm gonna start, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this every single night and I did. And I did it in the present where I said, I am dating this kind of person. And literally, I read this after I started dating this girl. And we've been dating for, you know, we've been dating for a few months. And I was like, man, this is the same girl. Like, this is literally the same person. And it, it kind of blew my socks off. So I think being highly intentional. And on top of that, I realized I'm actually highly motivated by two things in my life. I'm motivated by heartbreak and I'm motivated by love. When I'm in love with someone, I perform at an extremely high level. And when my heart's broken, I perform at an extremely high level. Of course, after I'm done moping, you know, um, I'll go there and kind of be bitter for a week or two and, and pretend I didn't like her anyways. And then once I kind of get over myself, I, I really like, I click into this mode. I'm like, you know what? That's not happening again. I'm not going to let someone slip through my fingers because I was not the kind of man that I should have been. Sometimes things just don't work out, but a lot of times I think that the only thing, I mean, I, I truly believe this, the only thing we can control is who we are. We can't make someone fall in love with us. We can't make the, 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 the person of our dreams come towards us, but we can affect our own character. And so for me, I've been highly intentional about my life. I've been highly intentional about the skills I've wanted to develop. And I'll tell you what, guys, it's been this awesome, awesome journey. And the more that I've tapped into who I want to become and trying to make that happen in my life, I've attracted higher and higher quality girls into my life. So going back, and this applies to both guys and girls, if you want to attract someone amazing into your life, be amazing. Be amazing. And that's the best fastest, most effective way I know to have an amazing relationship. All this other stuff I've told you, this is just, it's cool and great, but at the end of the day, if you want to attract some incredible, be incredible and be worthy of that person. You have to ask yourself, I mean, if there's the, what's, you know, who is, who is your dream girl? And then ask yourself after that, because we all have these lists, right? I had this huge old list of like, oh, she has to dance and sing and do this and that, and has to have all my hobbies and loves motorcycles too. Simultaneously, she, you know, like I had all these, I mean, it really was kind of this, this impossible human being, but later I changed the question to, okay, rather than saying who I want to find, I said, this girl that I really want, who does she want to find? I was like, oh man. And when I started thinking about that, I really thought, you know what? If I want that kind of a girl, here's who I need to become. And I'll tell you guys right now, I am not even close. I am so far away, but I'll, but I'm in the right, I'm moving in that direction and I'm, I'm okay with that. And 
that's what's important. And I'll never get there, not in this life, but that's okay. So that's, that's my two cents out there. Let share this with your friends, especially some of you girls, if you want to send this to a guy, great. Especially if like he's a, he's not catching on some of these ideas. Um, I'd love your questions. I love talking to you about this. I love it. Whenever, whenever someone's like, Hey, Brunson, I need some, I need some dating advice. I'm like, okay. I pull up a chair and I'm like, all right, tell me all about it. Like, I want to hear the whole story from start to finish. Give me all the details. I'm asking all these questions. Okay. Then what happened? Then, I mean, I, I just, I love it. I watched Hitch and it's so funny. My friends, I had a bunch of them tell me that they're like, dude, you're like, you're like a, a real life hitch. You just love relationships. You love understanding psychology. You love figuring people out. You love trying to like bring good people together. I'm like, I do. I love it. Unfortunately, I'm not the kind of person that can like look and go, oh yeah, that person should go with that person. I mean, not my gift, but I'm definitely like, I love when people say, hey, like, what do I do here? How do I, how do I get this girl to notice me? And I'm like, okay, I've, I've got some ideas for you. So anyways, that's my two cents. I would love to hear your comments. If you guys have any questions on this um, or even anything to add, I'd love, and I'm, again, I'm still learning. I'd love to hear what you guys' thoughts are. You guys out there, if you've got some amazing dating tips or dating ideas, I love those too. Send them my way. I'd just be thrilled to hear them and, uh, and I'll try to share them on, on one of my platforms. So guys, love you all. Take care and uh, we will see you on the next episode of the Brunson Podcast.